don't want some, do you? Is this all? All? That phone rings for you morning, noon, and night. Thanks. Nothing from Norman Brinker? Who's Norman Brinker? He's a sailor I met. Oh, Maureen. He's not an ordinary sailor. There are no ordinary sailors. You should see him on horseback. Hello? That's him. Well, yes, Mr. Brinker. I just walked in. Oh, uh, she just walked in. Hi. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, there are one or two more questions I could ask you. Fine. Is it true that uh, sailors have a girl in every port? I don't know. I haven't been in that many ports yet. Do uh, tennis stars have a boyfriend at every tournament? Well, some do. <laughs> I think you and I are about the same place. We can enjoy being friends without getting too serious. Exactly. Well, getting back to my article, um, what other interests do you have besides horses? I was on the tennis team at school. Tennis? Well, how about a few friendly games? suggest a friendly game? Let's make it checkers. <laughs> I've always wanted to go to Australia. Well, have the Navy send you now. <laughs> All right. I'll take it up with the Admiral first thing in the morning. How long do you think you'll be there? Two months at least. And I'm the world's worst letter writer. Now, there I can give you real competition. I certainly wouldn't want you to think that you had to write to me. Yeah, I know how busy you'll be. Yeah. Well, you'll probably be off to some other port before I get back. Probably. Maybe if you're not, maybe we could pick up where we left off. Mossy, how do you really feel about me? Feel about you? Well, I love you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, well, I'm not. I guess this means we're still at the same place. <laughs> I'm trying hard to keep up with you. <laughs> <laughs> You went to Europe that summer of 1953 to try for the Grand Slam, to win the Australian, French, English, and American championships in a single year. Don Budge was the only man ever to hold all four titles at the same time. In spite of some sharp play from Doris Hart, you left Paris the new French champion. And across the channel at Wimbledon, it was again Hart and Connolly in the finals. And you had three out of four. Only Forest Hills left. A good year. You're first on your own. Somehow our paths just never seem to cross. Plans now. Are you going to take a holiday? I'm going back Excuse to San Diego. Me. Excuse me. Uh, Miss Connolly, there's a telephone call for you in Mr. McCauley's office. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. Thank you. Overseas call for you, dear. Oh, hello, operator. She's here now. Thank you. Hello? Congratulations, Woe. <laughs> Nelson, how did you find out so fast? We just got word over the wire. You're on your way for the Grand Slam, kiddo. And we're proud of you. How's Sophie? She's just fine. Listen, hold on now. Someone here wants to talk to you. Hold on. Mosey, congratulations. Norman! Norman, oh, this makes it almost perfect. Oh, if only you were here. 
year. Maybe next year. Let's plan on it. Maureen, I've been waiting to tell you this until after the match today. I'm being shipped out. When? Tomorrow. You won't be there when I get home? I'll be at sea five months. Oh. We're never gonna have any time together. Oh, sure we will. Years and years. Look, this is costing Nelson a bundle. I'll keep writing. I love you, Bright Eyes. I love you. Norman. isn't a waterproof and it belongs to her grace the duchess of kent <laughs> sorry <laughs> you did it all you won the Grand Slam. The following year, you won Wimbledon again. For the third time. All right, Jerry. I'll tell her. Bye-bye now. Maureen, that was Jerry Timmons again. Oh, oh, he is persistent. And a very nice young man. No argument. You know, it wouldn't hurt you to go out with Jerry or some of the others. I don't have time. You're still sweet on Norman. Mom, I just don't think it's a good idea for me to be involved with anyone right now. to change our lunch plan to Sophie, but uh, they tell me the food's not bad here. 
Dr. Dorman, you are wanted in emergency. Dr. Dorman, you are wanted in emergency. What's happening? They're giving you more plasma, dear. They rush me here at 100 miles an hour, and then what? I wait and wait and wait. <laughs> you know, I'm not good at waiting, Ma. Norman, does Norman know? Nelson has put a call through to the naval base. Nancy Chafee called, and she's, uh, she's on her way here. <laughs> Nancy, <laughs> she's probably bringing a racket. <laughs> Tell her to book a court. I'll be right there, right there. Tell me what? Maureen, what? Maureen. Your right leg, all the leg and calf muscles have been severed, and the fibula bone is shattered. Can it be saved? I can try to repair ordinarily in such cases. Save my leg, please. It'll be long and painful, with no guarantees. I understand. Mo, this may be the toughest game you ever faced. I've been told I do best when I'm the underdog. It's been four days. My leg. Dr. Kimball says you should heal nicely. Of course, you have to have therapy. But will I be able to play? Um, the doctor wants to talk to you. Have you ever seen anything like this? These flowers? Mommy must have said something to you. Well, I, uh, you know, I, I really feel that that's between you and him. Have you ever seen so many flowers and telegrams and cables, letters? Norman? Uh, he phoned. He wanted to fly right back, but the Navy's refusing to give him leave, and he's very angry. The telegram. I told you, never trust a horse, teach. <laughs> Who said those? Oh, Wilbur, Fossil. <laughs> he says, hang in there, you stubborn little mick. <laughs> well, welcome back to the world. You saved my life. We've never been introduced. Dr. Kimball, Bruce Kimball. I'll just slip down and get a cup of coffee. Mom hates to face bad news. How about you, Mo? I guess I take after my father. How bad is it? Well, it's not bad at all to most girls. Two or three months, you'll be able to enjoy all normal activities. Tournament tennis isn't exactly a normal activity. No. Mo, your tournament days are over. The leg will never hold up to that kind of punishment. Accept it. Thank you for leveling. The losses to the tennis world. We do have plenty of other 
careers to choose from. Newspaper work, teaching, wife and mother. Doesn't that require a husband and a father? Mm -hmm. And the line forms on the right. Hi. Maureen. Norman. I guess your mom probably told you. I tried to fly out the day it happened. Usual red tape. They finally got tired of me calling the Pentagon. I want you to know that the Secretary of the Navy himself personally authorized my leave. He's a big fan of yours. This is my room. Dr. Norton, please call nurse station four west. Dr. Norton, please call nurse station four west. Anyway, I'm uh, sorry it took me so long to get here. You really didn't have to come at all. Mosey, I. Uh... A few weeks of therapy and I'll be as good as new. Better. Is that what the doctors say? That's what I say. Of course, it'll be a full time job. Meaning no room in your life for anything else or anybody else. Look, Maureen, I, uh, I talked to Nelson and Sophie. They told me what the doctor said. No more tournament tennis? Finished at 20. <laughs> Just starting. Look, you had a dream once, a big one. You made it all happen. OK, time for a new dream. I need you, Maureen. You need me. This accident, it hasn't changed what's between us? Or what isn't between us? I love you, Maureen. In an emotional crisis like this, people tend to let their feelings take over. They rush into commitments that they'll regret later. Will you marry me, Maureen? Norman, you don't understand. Right now, I don't know who I am, what I am. I'm nobody! Nothing! I don't want to make you unhappy. Then quit stalling and say you'll marry me right away. I don't know. Don't try to hold me out with these. You're wasting time, Marie. That's not like you. Let's get this new life of ours started. What do you say? Oh, Norman, I do love you. I do need you. And I will marry you. And I will marry you. But right now, please, just hold me tight.